Hello audience, here we have a 1930 Ford Model A four-door sedan and in this video we're going to touch up the bodywork, completely repaint it, and completely replace the interior. More specifically this is a standard trim level or base model four-door sedan, Briggs bodied. It's been completely restored I'm guessing in the late 60s or 70s and has had quite a bit of miles on it since then. The current owner has gone through it mechanically so it runs and drives good and now we're going to make it look good. Now looking at it from the outside looks pretty straight. I mean everything looks good until you start removing the paint but pretty straight looking hood. The fenders don't appear to have too much wrong with them. The body looks pretty clean. I don't see any rust coming through or any places where it's been badly patched. The wood is still holding up so there's probably not much wrong with it. I expect there'll be a little bit of patching here and there of the wood frame, but nothing serious. Not the biggest problem is the seams on the back where the panels were welded together originally they're starting to crack open so that'll need to be addressed. And aside from a few little door dings here and there I don't really see anything wrong with it so this should be fairly easy hopefully. So looking at the roof it should be reasonably smooth all around and I don't know if you can see on camera but it's a little lumpy here and there. Now this is a common problem what happens is the wood bows that run widthwise of the body, they warp over time. And this is a very easy problem to fix and it's critical that we fix it before the interior is installed because those wood bows also hold the headliner. Looking inside, as you can see, the interior, it was nice once but it's got considerable age and wear on it. Now if you're wondering, no, there's no possible way this is an original interior, but it's a very well-made reproduction of it. Now, as typical, the driver's seat has got the most wear on it. It's fairly common with these door pockets is when they get all the elastic wears out and then they just fall open. Now the front seat bottom cushion looks like it's starting to deform because this edge out here should be like straight and now it's bowing out. The back seat has got this problem here the bottom cushion is deformed pretty bad also this line should be straight. Now this is fairly common with old spring sets they just distort from age and and something's really wrong with this because I can completely collapse the springs with one hand and I should not be able to do that. This is probably the wrong spring set. It might be the backrest off of something else. So all around it was well made. It's just got considerable age on it and it's time for a replacement. Okay, it's been about a month or so. I had to go patch together another car, so sorry there was not much to show on this, but as you can see, it's a lot more apart than it was. So, to start with, as you can see, the engine is out of it. We removed the engine for two reasons. One, to replace the throwout bearing, because the owner was complaining about that, and to make it easier to paint the firewall which as you can see the firewall has been painted. I'll show you how we prepared that. Here we can see the body man is removing paint from the firewall with an acetylene torch. I do not recommend this technique with any other part of the body because the heat can warp the sheet metal really easy, but the firewall is made out of a much thicker sheet metal which makes it more difficult to heat warp. Now this is a restored car so there's no surface rust to remove and there's only about two paint jobs on it. Now we want to do a quality paint job that's going to last 
and painting over who knows what is not a good way to do it. So taking it down to the bare metal is a good safe measure. The fuel tank has been removed because the inside of the firewall, the paint was just peeling off of it really bad. So stripped that, painted it. The fuel tank wall was out, painted the interior part of it. And it's been installed. New screws with new weld going around. And if you're wondering why the outside isn't painted yet, it's because the bodies were painted after assembly originally, so the screws, the weld, all that needs to be painted over. So we'll paint that when it's time to paint the rest of it. Haven't found much rust or any damage with the body. There are a few pinholes down here where the rust was coming through, but that was easy to fix. So not, not really much to mention. The wood for the roof, that was in really bad shape. So we removed that and are in the process of replacing it. Now on the corner here, the header has like a few screws that go to the rest of the wood which you can't remove with the body assembled. So pretty much the only way to remove these without taking the body apart is to just bust apart the ends and remove it in pieces. And we can't put the screws back in because the body's assembled. But that's not really going to be a problem. It'll be strong enough even without them. Now there's a nail every couple of inches that holds all this wood on. I have to remove all of them. Yeah, well, may as well get started on it. Also, there's these bolts that go through this wood to this brace here. There's a nut on the back. And this was all put together before the body was assembled. So you got to carefully back these nuts out. Which I'm doing really carefully with a 716 open end wrench. When we put it back together, I'll figure out some easier way to put this together. Luckily there's only two of them per side. So that's it for this video. Now in the next video we'll start making new wood and installing it, hopefully without too many serious problems. So thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next part.